Let's do some news. Welcome, everybody. It is January 11th, 2019. Current year. We're only 11 days in, and so much shit has happened. So much shit has happened. Uh, some of it is, some of it's very drama, right? We'll cover some of that stuff at the end. I'm, I'm going to omit, uh, even though it's only five-day-old news, six-day-old news, uh, I'm going to omit the rice gum and uh, Logan Paul uh, pitch a gambling site to kids thing. I was going to cover that because... I felt like it was a whole lot like T. Martin and all that business that happened uh, two years ago, I think. And I was thinking, wow, this kind of hits close to home because there's like there's so much, you know, that, that's happening here where like they're they're pitching all this stuff, do whatever. But there's so much other shit that's happened. That I'm just like, you know what? It's fine. You know, let 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 the other side of YouTube have their own gambling uh, uh, ex, you know, bonanza <laughs> and fiasco over there and controversies. Let them have their own. They'll eventually figure it out, like we did. That uh, that YouTubers are are fucking sh are fucking shady, fucking shady. They are, except for except for me, except for me. You guys, you guys can trust me. Uh, but uh, uh, it wasn't Logan. Oh, it was Jake. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was actually on Logan Paul's uh podcast because yes, he has a podcast. Um. Where he was talking to Rice Gum, and he and and Rice Gum was like, or right, I don't know what he goes by. I feel weird calling him Rice, but uh, but Rice Gum was like, Rice Gum said, "Oh man, but I got get, but I got that bag though, and that's what people tell me get that bag, get that basically get paid, right?" He's like, "I got that bag, and so that's all that matters." And so so like even he was a like, completely unapologetic to you, you know, about about the whole thing. Uh, he was just like, "Oh yeah, no, I got paid, so you know, it's cool, right? Everything's cool. Everybody's happy because I got paid, right? Isn't that what everybody wants me to get paid?" And that was like his thing. And I was like, damn, man, that's, that's, like, that's, that's really childish <laughs> and greedy. What the fuck? But it's cool, man. It's cool. It's cool. It's, it's fine. My kid's not old enough to uh, appreciate that kind of uh, 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 video content, thankfully. Thankfully. He's watching other crap that I have to, like, like get rid of. Stupid Minecraft sh your shenanigans where they're, like, beheading each other. I have to delete that shit. Ugh. All this stuff on YT Kids. Give me a break, YouTube. Be better at filtering your stuff. What was the one I found this morning? Uh, it was like, it was a Minecraft machinima and there was sword fighting. He literally cut his head off. And I was like, well, blocking this whole channel. I mean, Declan hadn't seen it, thankfully, but still, it was in his, like, recommend, recommended videos. I was like, come on, man. Anyways, yeah, raising kids is hard. <sighs> raising kids so they don't grow up like Logan Paul and Rice Gum or whatever, Jake Paul, whatever the fuck. Like, that is, that's, that's tough. That's a tough thing. You know, goals. You don't want to go, you don't want to get the, you don't want to be like that or even interested in that kind of shit. <sighs> so, first up, this just happened. This just happened. This just came out. Which button I push up for this again? It's been a while. Former Gearbox lawyer accuses CEO Randy Pitchford uh, of taking secret $12 million bonus in a lawsuit that Gearbox calls absurd. So, uh, this was, this is kind of interesting. This kind of came out of, nowhere. you know, I was thinking, oh, it's another lawsuit between, uh, this lawsuit's happening all the time in, in, you know, in this industry. It's like, oh, lawsuit. And it's, it's like, Rand, it's Randy. It's like, fuck, Randy, Randy's always involved in something, right? Duke Nukem Forever in 2011, uh, 2014, uh, Colonial Marines. He's always involved in something that's making people upset, right? So, whatever. But then you read this article. Right. And we're on uh, we are on Kotaku. We actually have a few articles on Kotaku, uh, but don't worry. Jason Schreier is the one covering it. Jason Schreier is probably the only person I'll read from Kotaku. Actually, he actually got his shit together. Um, Gearbox sues Wade Calendar. All right. This is what I, I actually wrote. So I have some notes here. Right. So because this gets pretty, pretty ridiculous. So Gearbox sues Wade Calendar for fraud and breach of his uh, fiduciary duties after using company credit cards to uh, to pay money for for his home loans and student loans. Uh, family vacations, uh, gun club memberships, and and it says it says it says uh, trying to get six pack abs. I'm quoting this, okay? Uh, which I guess <laughs> I guess that's something you do with uh, with company money, right? <laughs> Let me just take some of that petty cash and go give me some abs. Uh, and so so he decides that he's going to counter sue and file his own suit. Not necessarily counter suit, but just you know file his own suit. Uh, and in in this suit, in this filing. He, he says that, um, 
he makes a few allegations against uh, Pitchford. He says that uh, Pitchford, Pitchford received a personal $12 million advance bonus from Take Two for Borderlands. Uh, the money was apparently set, sent to a separate entity called Pitchford uh, Entertainment Music Ma Magic Media Magic or something like that, LLC. So it wasn't even like to anything related to Borderlands. Um, and so that's that's the initial. It's like, oh wow, okay. So he basically like you know he took he took or he allegedly took a twelve million dollar thing. I was like, okay, wow. So he's suing he's suing them for that. Okay, sure, that's that's fine. It's he's it's kind of one of those things. that's like, oh, you guys are gonna sue me for misusing company funds. Well, guess what? I'm gonna <laughs> we're, I'm gonna counter sue you for doing the exact same thing. But then he says in 2014, Pitchford left behind a thumb drive at a Dallas Texas restaurant containing sensitive corporate documents about the partnerships between uh, them and 2K, uh, 2K games, Sega, Sony, Microsoft, and a few other companies. Um, and if that wasn't enough, also on this thumb drive, allegedly, uh, was underage pornography. Child porn was on this thing. Well, I don't know if it's child, I don't know how we classify that. Is there age brackets? Basically, someone under 18 that was naked. Bad idea, right? Uh, on a thumb drive. Oh no, Randy. I know. Oh no, Randy. Uh, he also alleges that Randy held parties where adult men exposed themselves to minors to the amusement of Pitchford. So this just keeps on going, man. This is like, like, it's, it's just like how much further down, like the shitty person tree can you possibly go? Like, it just keep. I, I, at first, I was like, "Oh wow, what, what, he's potentially embezzling money from his own company. That's great. Oh wow, he's he's you know he just has like practically zero uh, operation security, leaving thumb drives a little place with data. Oh my god, his fucking chopper. Oh my god, it like exposes himself to kids. What the fuck is going on? You know, this is why. Yeah, he, he started a gambling site for kids. Yeah, this is this is why. By the way, we kicked the whole gambling site thing for kids because I feel like this one's a little bit worse. Uh, yeah, it just gets just dark, just dark. Yeah, he's like, I knew, I knew Randy, Randy Pritchford was uh, a shit allegedly. So obviously these are all allegations. Um, and it's, there's, uh, there's like actually a couple of suits here that, uh, Jason very politely gives to us here. So we can actually take a look if you wanted to, uh, do you want to click on that? Come on, come on full screen. Okay. We'll do this and we'll go full screen. Okay. It doesn't work. I will just, uh, we'll just, let me see. Let me see if I can find it in here. I want to find in here where it says, um, underage. Oops, I spelled right. Under age. Do, do. Oh, okay. I can't find that in there. Okay. Well, I was hoping to pull up in the actual uh, uh, thing itself. But yeah, so so it's allegations. But of course, of course, uh, if you check his mentions, which I don't have pulled up right here, unfortunately. But if you check his mentions, he is getting shit on. Uh, and ba I mean, he's basically a, 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 you know, a, a pedophile. Like he's already been convicted. So what this pretty much means is like, I mean, like, what's the current status actually? What what was the last game that that? Uh, what, what is wait? What is what does Gearbox have coming up? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Like, what do they have coming up? Because, like, I feel like oh, Borderlands VR. Okay, that was the next thing. Okay, Borderlands. But there's no announcements for any other any new actual Borderlands. Um, uh, uh, like any any continuation of the story, like any another installment or in the series, right? I don't think so. Um, yeah, ale allegedly, but we have no, like, actual information or whatever. Borderlands 2.3.4.6.1a. Oh, right, that's right, they were working on that, weren't they? The attacks made my former friend and colleague have no basis in reality or law. He is simply trying to shake me down for money. We will win, but because lawsuits are pending, I can't comment as much as you like. I am shocked by his lies. Thanks for- Oh, did he just post this? This is new, right? He just tweeted three minutes ago. Ah, okay. Okay. There we go, yeah. Let me see. So I'll pull that up here for you guys. Randy Pitchford, there he is, Duval Magic. There it is, there it is. All right, we'll just drag this guy over here. So here you go, the attacks made by my former friend and colleague have no basis in reality or law. Or law. So yeah, he's basically coming out saying that it is, it is uh, absolutely untrue. And, um, you know, in his defense, like, legally, he's not convicted of these crimes, right? But also, is there is, is there any proof like this? These are pretty serious allegations, man. Like literally anyone could say this about anyone. Yeah, man. You know, a few years ago, you dro you dropped a thumb drive that had child porn on it. And what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say no, I didn't. Like because I didn't. And it's just like, well, well, it's 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 now it's like it's in the court of law or sorry, the court of social media. Like 
usually the person being accused is the one that's basically going to be that's it um and so i'm curious actually what the uh what i'm actually very very uh scared to scroll down here a little bit but uh oh so most people are kind of like oh we support you we support you. this is not the mentions that i saw earlier by the way by the way but yeah uh it's real but it wasn't child porn oh there's another article man this is keeps on happening i'm telling you man this is unraveling can't keep up man let me get ars technica here Find this new article. This is why I have co-hosts like this. You guys are awesome. I'll turn this fan back on. It's hot as fucking here. Uh, let's see. You see, uh, Gearbox CEO confirms he left USB stick of porn at Medieval Times. Medieval Times, really? Uh, let's see. Let me go and pull this article over here. Uh, pull this whole thing over here if I can. One second. Woo, man. This just keeps on, just keeps on going. Just does not. <laughs> There's no stopping this article, this, uh, this story. Let me see. Boo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, here we go. So it does, he does confirm that there was porn on it, but uh, I'm guessing this is where it says in here that the, he says did he exploiting and then private cravings. Uh, a restaurant that he uses company's money as an adult men and kids. We've read this part already. We already know this part. Um, I just read a USB stick places a discovery at a two, 2014 Medieval Times dinner and tournament location uh, located in Dallas, down the road from Gearbox's Plano, Texas uh, headquarters. Blah, 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 and Pitchford declared that the thumb drive was his and requested its prompt return at this time, uh, and all this stuff, and he says that personal enraged priority in addition to sensitive corporate, okay, okay, and then, and then there's this, yes, it's true, whatever this, wait, what is this related to? This is all, look at this, this is 12.46 p.m., like, this is, like, now news, what the fuck, man, <sighs> save that shit in the cloud, I mean, I don't know, man, like, I feel like if you're dealing with some kind of, uh, pornography that you're not supposed to have you would hide it you know like that's like i would just upload that shit to the internet <laughs> i mean i may i may be fuck i don't know uh see gear da, 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 da. okay so david eddings a former gearbox vice president up until 2017 took to twitter after kotaku's report went live with a vague two-word post it's true what what the fuck but randy says it's not true but this but but david eddings said it is true it's crazy wow this is, this is, this is, wow, this, this is, this is actually boiling down to, like, almost a Twitter drama, uh, a thing, which we have more of later on in the show. Ah, wouldn't it be a problem if he, yeah, if he used Betamax, he'd get through, like, scot-free. Totally fine. Man. The porn was a magic trick. <laughs> Pitchford corroborates some of the story, uh, story's details by appearing on a podcast that went live one day after the lawsuit was filed. Uh, and he said, clean cam girl pornography in which the host... Uh, exposes himself to a live feed and takes requests and financial tips from consumers. Pitchford explained that he was a consumer of this content. He confirmed he copied the specific video to his memory stick to, as he describes it, work out the method of how, cam girl, how the cam girl hosted the faked act of female ejaculation. Be warned, he describes how the video looks in particularly graphic detail. Squirt. Uh, I realize this is not a sex worker, Pitchford said on the show. This is a fucking magician! Bitchford, for those unaware, was a vested interest, has a vested interest in the field of magicians and owns the magic focus Chini magazine. Oh, oh man. Man. God. <laughs> That's like some shit you say to your wife when like she discovers some shit. It is like, oh, well, I was interested in it because I thought it it was it was it was a magic trick. I was, whoa, it's magic. I couldn't. How is that possible? I must study this further. I need to collect as much, as many squirting videos as I possibly can and study them all carefully, carefully to see what it actually is. Because wow, wow, crazy. Just creepy crazy. Wow. So that's, um, that's an interesting, yeah, that's fine. I mean, he could, he could also just say, and it would be like way less weird if he was just like, hey, yeah, I saw this girl squirt on cam. And I was like, damn, that's kind of hot and so i decided to check it out i put it on i put it on a thumb drive that would be understandable that would be understandable because people can relate to that but no one's gonna say that must be magic that must be some kind of crazy trick how do they do that no one's gonna say that it's p guys it's p all right sorry to ruin sorry to ruin it for you but it's p what the fuck piss magic piss magic titles i wish i could use for this episode what the fuck man so that's that's all unraveling, right? It's not P. It's not P. Oh God, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, it's not. It's not. It's not. I assure you, 
I assure you. Um, there's only two kinds of books in the world. Those that watch porn, those that lie about watching porn, like that guy. Exactly. It's magic. It's magic. It was magic. Uh, so, yeah, these things are actually happening right now. This tweet was sent out at 3.11 p.m. It's 3.20 p.m. as of this recording right now. Uh, so it's just like, this is crazy. Just fucking crazy. So I guess I guess we'll see where this goes. But like, but he's still technically the CEO of, um, of Gearbox, right? And already... I mean, just from like a release perspective, like Gearbox has not been doing that great. They really, really, really did not need another, another controversy. They really didn't need another controversy. What was it? 2011, 2014. 2011 was Duke Nukem, by the way. Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, 2014 was Colonial Marines. Uh, in 2019. So he's he's a few he's a couple years late on some controversy, but uh, but still, man, like this. This, you know, and, and, and this actually made me think, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, of controversies that related to like various companies, uh, that have been like showing, rearing their ugly heads in the past, like uh, past, like probably like what year or something like that. Like it was like the riot thing. And then there was like the blizzard thing. Uh, and then, and now there's like, oh, we will come to find out that, you know, somebody uh, you know, allegedly, uh, might have either some interesting porn of, uh, uh, uh affiliations or um or inclinations or 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 i guess uh, potentially also like child porn which he says is not true so uh i guess until they recover that thumb drive we'll never know but um but man like it's 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 only a matter of time before like the dirt and this actually yeah this all the this this revelation like actually came after uh seeing somebody talk about how 23 and me ruined their life and uh, it, it's it's a post i think somebody posted it in discord but I'll try to re like recite it from memory here. But basically, it was like an Ask Reddit thread. And it was like, how has 23andMe ruined your life kind of thing? Uh, and someone said that um, they knew that they were adopted. Uh, their mother gave... They, yeah, the, yeah, it's like he said, he said, my mother gave me up to, um, to her friends. And I never knew who my real dad was. I guess from my mom or whatever. And... Um, and so I decided to do 23andMe just to kind of see what, you know, what, the, what the deal is. Uh, and so it did 23 me and then find out found out that her dad was her 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 her, her adopted dad was her biological dad uh which obviously was uh <laughs> was a surprise to the mom to the adopted mom but yeah it's, it made me think it's like you know when people were messing around uh you know 20 30 years ago or give or take uh they weren't thinking in their head, oh man, sometime in the future, the technology might be, <laughs> might be accessible where, where you could just very easily find out, found out that you cheated on your wife 20 years ago. You know, like nobody thought of that shit back then. They were just fucking around the seventies, eighties, you know, uh, probably nineties. Sure. Yeah. It's like, it's just, just messing around. And then 30 years later, it's like, oh, well, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> I have, I, I have a sibling over here. I wonder why that is that that's. That's got to be insane, first of all, but also made me feel like, you know, technology is catching up and like things are eventually, everything eventually comes, comes to, 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 uh, to the surface. And so now it's like with gaming stuff, it's like, you know, for the longest time, like this kind of, you know, sexism and, uh, uh, you know, actually every ism, I guess is all, all exists in, in the games industry, the same way that it exists in every other industry, uh, our budding industry. Right. And so it's like, all these things are starting to be exposed now. And it's just like, fuck, everything, yeah, everything eventually, yes, Ira, thank you. Giggity. <laughs> uh, as an all, uh, minority report is here, I know, eventually it's what it's gonna be. I might be your dad, incognito, you don't know. I might be your dad. Um, as an old teacher of mine used to put it, back when sex was safe and scuba was dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny, actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, so... So I guess I guess we'll just wait and see what happens because there's probably more that's coming out, you know, uh, on this whole story. But um, wow, just what a just <laughs> what a what a surprise. So I guess the other thing that everybody's already aware of, at least I hope you're all aware of uh, this one. So let's see, you got everything here. Yeah, we do. So Bungie, you guys know Bungie, right? They made a game called Destiny, Halo, Marathon. Pathways into Darkness, Myth, Oni, all this stuff, right? They basically made a ton of games over the years. Uh, so they are splitting with Activision, but they're keeping Destiny. How, who, what? Huh? Huh? Who's that? Pop Champagne. That's what they did. Yep. Exactly. Exactly, Martha. So that's actually, it's funny. That's the first line of my notes. Employees cheered and popped champagne at the announcement. So... <laughs> 
Let's go back. Let's go back in time. So Bungie, as, as, a, as a kid, uh, Bungie was like my favorite game developer, right? Bungie, Bungie and um, uh, Blizzard were my two favorite game developers. Uh, this is the 90s. This is, be- this is before. This is before they were cool, right? Uh, I would play, I played Marathon uh, to death. <clears throat> and then I played Warcraft 2. As you guys know, with the Loria streams that we had done uh, recently, I played that to death. Um, those were my games back then. And so Blizzard, Activision, uh, or sorry, yeah, uh, um, Blizzard and um, Bungie were my two favorite ones. I actually thought they were the same company for a while there because I didn't really, you know, know who the game developers were and I got the bees mixed up, whatever. Uh, so in the late, in 1999, Bungie announces a new game at uh, Macworld Expo uh, alongside interim CEO uh, Cook. And they announced this game. It's called Halo. It was supposed to be a Mac game. It was a big deal. Everyone was like, oh shit, it's like a spiritual successor to Marathon, because Marathon was released in 1994, and then the, the, six, the, the, the next uh, installments were like 95, 96. Like they, they had like a yearly release schedule of full games. Right. If you look at the release dates, it's like, seriously, it's like it's like a year, maybe 18 months where they're releasing entire games. Now, you might think, oh, well, Marathon, that's that's a super easy. Like, that's an old game, whatever. It's super easy. Like, it's, 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 it's still, though, it's like, yeah, it's maybe de- games a little more detailed now. But um, but still, you were still making a game. <clears throat> uh, oh, the story and the lore and all that shit. Like, it's crazy. So. 1999, they announced they're going to uh, release a new game called Halo for the um, for Mac. And then in 2000, they signed, uh, they were actually acquired, acquired. That's really important, actually. They were acquired by Microsoft. Now, this is all new. You guys know this, right? So they were acquired by Microsoft. They released a bunch of Halo games. We all know how that went. Hey, Bungie, just work on Halo. Hey, just work on Halo. You got side projects? Mm, How about Halo? (laughs) How about that? What you working on? You working on some Halo? We were working on Halo today. That was was Microsoft, basically, with Bungie. So Bungie wasn't feeling that. So Bungie uh, negotiated their um, their 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 release. I want to say it might have been early. No, no, it was an acquisition. So actually, they just basically negotiated the release uh, where they separated from Microsoft, but they left the Halo franchise around. As we know, that three four three took over uh, with um, wasn't Halo announced by Jobs? I think so. I think so. I actually seen the video, but <clears throat> I just know that was the year that it happened because it was the year I joined the military. Um, and so. So they separate from Microsoft. They obviously don't take um, don't take uh, Halo with them. They leave Halo there, and then basically they take over from there. Uh, then, in two thousand and ten, Bungie signs a publishing deal with Activision. So that's that's the uh, that's 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 the second time, right? <clears throat> that they've now signed with a major publisher. Uh, which is huge. Not a lot of game devs get to do that, right? As you say, the second time Bungie has wanted to split from a publisher thinking about it, Bungie doesn't like to be under a publisher, making it shaking on a third. Well, we'll get there. So that was 2010. They signed, it was a 10 year, it was a 10 year publishing deal. It wasn't an acquisition. This was not the same story as Microsoft, not the same thing. Um, now it may have been handled about the same because if they have a publishing deal, then that means that Activision probably has some kind of influence financially over Bungie. And in in, uh, Microsoft's acquisition perspective, right, from that whole case, uh, probably the same thing. I don't know if Microsoft is necessarily working on uh, any of the Halo games, like especially like Halo, Halo 2, Halo 1, uh, but they were probably there with like the financial part, the same way that Activision is. So, So the actual... Uh, communication and the actual influence from the publisher was probably about the same. If, if it was just my guess, it was probably about the same. Um, and so then last year, NetEase gives Bungie a uh, hundred million dollars in June of 2018. They give they give uh, Bungie a hundred million dollars for. Um, they wanted a, a stake in the company and they wanted a chair on the board. So they basically bought themselves a chair on the board. NetEase, a uh, Chinese company. Um, then this year, they split up. Activision and Blizzard uh, actually split up, but, de- but they keep the Destiny IP. 
NetEase wanted a Destiny Mobile game. Active was like, did you not just see what happened to Diablo? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I feel like Microsoft as a publisher has generally been good. Ironically, seems less hell bent on turning the games they publish into garbage. It does feel like that, right? Microsoft is one of the big, big publishers that doesn't really feel like they're they're going on the EA uh, slash Activision route slash Bethesda route now. I guess, uh, man, I got to include them on the list. <laughs> Jeez, confuse those bees again. I know. Did I did I miss one up there? Anyway, so uh, so Bungie splits some Activision. They keep the Destiny IP. Probably what's where some of that hundred million dollars went. Um, and if we look back at, at, at articles and stuff that were posted, this is, uh, again, it's Jason Schreier. Um, I don't, I should follow this guy on, on Twitter, actually, because every time I look at an article that I like on Kotaku, it's always him. So clearly there's a trend here. <laughs> and speaking of trends, maybe it's Bungie that's the fucking problem. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. So in an interview that was done uh, a while back, this is actually an excerpt from a... Um, Jason Schreier got this information from uh, somebody at Bungie. And it said, what Bungie decided was, we can't do this anymore. This is just too much. This is too hard for us to do. The tools that we work, this is last year, by the way. Uh, the tools that we work with are really hard to deal with. It's hard for us to make this much content. It's just hard making content in general. And they said, we are going to do a drip feed of smaller stuff and we're going to put up the Eververse, sell microtransactions and make money that way. And Activision said, okay, it was part of their renegotiated deal. So for some of you guys who are thinking like, like, whoa, this is like, this is great because that means the Eververse is going to go away. You're not familiar with Eververse is the microtransactions uh, uh, part of, uh, of Destiny. So you buy the game and then you have microtransactions on top of it in the store. Um, so that obviously didn't sit well, sit well with a lot of people. But because of the um, the financial like burden that Activision was putting on <coughs> Activision is all right. Uh, the financial burden that Activision was putting on Bungie, they created the Eververse to basically get them off their back uh, and to help meet those uh, those financial goals that they had, uh, those revenue goals that they had. And so that that obviously made oh yeah okay sure well we're gonna get paid so we don't give a shit if there's content right they don't care if there's content just. Put out, yeah, put out a couple stupid dances. Bitches love dances. Look at Fortnite. This fucking dance machine. That's all it is. Um, Destiny will remain, for the time being, Destiny will remain part of the Battle.net app. I don't know how long, right? That could just all, it could just disappear one day. Um, <clears throat> or probably whenever they announce a new game, they'll probably kick that one off or something like that. Uh, Destiny... Will uh, obviously now not be at at BlizzCon. Reinhardt, you, you know what I'm about to say. Uh, Destiny will not be at BlizzCon, but it also leaves open a whole lot of room for Call of Duty. So you'll probably see Call of Duty at there. There's plenty of room now. You don't have to squeeze. You don't have to squeeze in both Destiny and Call of Duty. Now you could. Now that you've ditched Destiny, you could just all this room. You can just put Call of Duty in there. So you have Diablo Mobile, Warcraft Mobile. Hots is gone, so there's even more room. <laughs> What other games do they have? Oh yeah, Overwatch. <laughs> StarCraft 2 is gonna be the one thing that like, I can't believe StarCraft 2 is surviving all this. Like it just exists. StarCraft 2 just fucking exists. Like nothing ever happens in StarCraft 2. The tournaments still happen. <laughs> StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2 tournaments still happen. Uh, they, made, they, made, they made a couple changes in a recent patch, but that was pretty much it. But yeah, don't mention StarCraft. I know, no, maybe they forgot. Maybe they forgot. We should, we should, don't, don't, don't let them know. <laughs> they, they totally freaking forgot about the, about it. the second, the second they do find out though, they're going to come back and, uh, that's where we're going to lose it somehow. They'll figure out some way to take it away from us. Oh man. The Starcraft 2 is immortal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Korea supports, uh, Starcraft until, until they start losing and then they're going to start losing interest. Right. Two years in a row. I said, I said, it's in a tweet. I, I, I'm seriously like, I, <laughs> I was like, if if a uh, if a foreigner wins, uh, a basically not if a non-Korean wins uh, the world championship in StarCraft Two again for two years in a row, if they win again this year, then uh, the North and South Korea might actually unite over this. Like it might it might fuck up South Korea so much that every that basically it's just like let's just work out all. There clearly we have a foundational issue if we're losing at StarCraft two years in a row. This it's real, man. Like StarCraft StarCraft is a big deal over there. Still, still. Uh, you just seen these guys going nuts. I watched the StarCraft uh, uh, tournament that ended in December, and uh, man, they guys guys go fucking nuts over this. Man, the casters are like crazy, and uh, you know we have 
uh, uh, Tastosis, those guys. And, you know, they're chill. They're just like, oh, yeah, this, this, whatever. And you can hear the, the Korean guys in the back, like, fucking screaming and everything. It's like, whoa, holy shit, what's happening over there? Uh, anyways, yeah, so going back to Bungie, um, it makes me wonder if actually Bungie's the problem, right? Like, Bungie has... You know, they, they, they've now left two publishers, which is which is something that you just don't see ever. It just does not exist. Uh, the games industry maybe hasn't been around long enough to see that happen. Uh, but but still, uh, just separating from a publisher and surviving is hard enough. Concerned Ape, you guys know, uh, you guys know what Concerned Ape is uh, from uh, Stardew Valley. He's now publishing his own games. Uh but that's maybe perhaps a little bit of a different story because <laughs> he's got his own thing going on. Uh, he doesn't have 750 people working for him as of 2016, according to Wikipedia for Bungie. Like, that's a lot of people, right? So I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing uh, what Bungie does because I feel like now there's expectations. Uh, he said, I've heard none of the original creatives at Bungie uh, are there anymore. Right. Roger Bungie's own, doc Bungie's own documentaries from the Halo days, it seems... Uh, to be, they've always had some issues, but they kept their shit together for the Halo games, mostly, right? Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of like when parents work out their differences for their kids, right? It's like, no, no, look, we have to make this marriage work for our kids, right? Uh, there's no there's no underlying message here, me, you know, message here, by the way. Jen and I are fine, but you know how it is. My parents did that. They tried to do that, didn't work out. Um, but yeah, it, it's 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 the expectations now from the community are going to be like, oh, the Eververse is going to go away, right? But that's easy money. That's not going to go anywhere. Uh, Oh, maybe now we'll get better content. It's like, well, we'll have to, we'll have to <laughs> blink twice if you need help. Now I have to try not to blink. Thank you. <laughs> so now we have to wonder if uh, they, uh, uh, or we have to wait and see what the, what the pacing uh, and cadence of content. Dad, I fucking blink twice. No, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to check and see what they, we'll have to wait and see what the cadence of content release is going to be and what the quality of the content is. Destiny 2 Forsaken, for the most part, from what I've heard, is well beloved by the community at least the people that i that i used to play with um hohan and uh uh and cory and and all these guys actually still play it um you know they've said that it's that it's 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 good it's great and so so it's like i think people just basically want more of that i i still think like destiny one year three right that's kind of like the golden era of of that even though i didn't get a chance to play it that much because at that time i was fucking done Oh, and it's playing against his will. <laughs> He's being held hostage. There he is. There he is. Yeah. So, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But I mean, this is like twice. Yeah. If you, if you read a story about somebody that's constantly, uh, uh, breaking up with their girlfriends, right. Or, or, or boyfriends or whatever, uh, you would, you would have to think it's like, maybe the problem is that person. Maybe that, maybe, maybe that's the problem. Maybe. Uh, I still play destiny two as well. It's pretty fun. At least for me. Yeah. The people are, seem to be enjoying it. Um, Best content Destiny has ever had. See? And it could potentially only get better. You're right? Potentially. Potentially. That's the key word there. Potentially. Um, what's next? Did you guys hear the story about this Overwatch player? Man. That was, that was some serious news for a minute there. I couldn't go anywhere without saying something about that. Whew. So... Oh, Ellie. Yeah, you've heard of her. Yes. So, someone named Ellie starts playing Overwatch and ends up being like a top four player. So here he goes. This is top four player on a high level account that came out of nowhere and got signed to uh, to somebody uh, to a, to a a unfunded team, a team that's basically looking for funding, right? Um, named Second Wind and. When, when she started to gain in popularity, obviously, and I understand that there's two sides of this, right? Whenever, whenever a, a woman or a female gets really, really good at a game, for some fucking reason, we have to question it, right? For some reason, we have to question it. And this looked like a cut and dry, ugh, gamers, come on, dude. Like, you're making us all look bad. Just fucking let it go, let it go. It looked like a case of that, but people would not fucking let it go. They were like, nah, this is too shady. This is too shady. I mean, like, it was just weird. It was just fucking weird. You know, this is the... We're happy to announce that Ellie uh, will be the newest addition to our roster for this season contest. So, so everybody's kind of like, cool, congrats. Yeah, awesome. You know? And then, of course, there's people on the flip side that are probably there saying that it's shit. That it's like, oh, it's fake. It's totally fake. It's totally fake. Um, she's not real. 
And so after so much, after so much, uh, so much of a fiasco, and of course the, you know, the article that comes out says Overwatch Pro quits after harassment over whether she was really playing. So obviously Kotaku jumps on this, not, not Jason Schreier, by the way. Uh, Original story towards the end of last month, blah, 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 all this stuff. They basically go through and they say that some fans believe the mystery uh, about Ellie's name called her entire identity into question, including her gender. Ellie is one of the very few women in Blizz's Overwatch Contenders League, and some fans speculate that she could be any number of notable male players impersonating a woman, right? And of course, the comments and everybody was saying, oh, of course, it can't, it can't, it can't be a, a woman can't be good at games, right? And, you know, this has happened before. It's like, yeah, like, was it the Amy thing or whatever? Like, yeah, there's, uh, I, I can't even keep track of the things that have happened in the past. So anyways, yes, it does, uh, uh, it does come out that, step one, that Ellie is going to be, uh, stepping down from the team. So this was like two weeks, I think. Like, the announcement was like the 16th or something like that of December, and then January 2nd says, unfortunately, due to some unforeseen reactions, Ellie has opted to step down from the team. We hope you continue to support her in her ventures, uh, in Overwatch as we will. And... Yeah, you happen to, yeah, you see it happen in female streamers all the time. Absolutely. No, I'm not denying. I'm telling you. I'm not denying that the shit happens. And it's shitty. It's shitty. But this whole fiasco doesn't fucking help the situation. So she tweets out. She says, sorry. That's all she says. And, you know, a bunch of people are kind of like, best of luck. We love you. We're sorry that people are like this and all this shit, right? And all this stuff's happening. And, you know, it's funny. As I was looking at this, as I look at this account, I, I, I went down to kind of see if there's any other relevant tweets to what was happening, the drama, the, all this, you know, drama and everything. And I, I got to the end, December 16th. And it was like, oh. And so it's like, okay, I, I could see it's another thing. It's just another thing to be added to the list of like, oh, this is the end. This is the end of her Twitter. So she made the account just right when she got signed it's like okay well that's probably not unusual you know the the team probably said hey you know you 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 have um you need to have a public persona or something like that to help us you know uh further uh advertise you know shows and matches and all that shit and so <clears throat> man you guys already know the end of the story but i want to kind of go through the whole thing so then this clip comes out and i feel like all this happened at the same time right it was like everybody was breaking the story that and actually, I'll just let I'll just let her say it herself. Talk up around this Ellie person, right? Um, feel free to clip whatever I say. I seriously don't care. Um, we did. <sighs> Ellie is not Ellie. Okay. Ellie is not Ellie. The whole situation was meant to be in a way, like a, a social experiment. Oh, oh, a social experiment. Oh man, by the way, this is not Ellie. Just so you know, this is not Ellie like coming on saying this, okay? This is somebody else completely, all right? She clapped. Ellie is actually Punisher and he told me yesterday. So there you go. Hello, Reddit. Um, yeah, Ellie hello, is Hello, Just News. He did this for like a social experiment thing and did not expect it to get out of hand. So that's kind of the juice around that. The, the juice. I love that she calls it. That's kind of the juice around that. I'm going to start using it. That's kind of the juice around that. Yeah, that is the juicy bit around that. It's, it's fake. She's fake. It's not real. Slasher on Twitter also puts up a couple notes. Saying that Ellie has said in private messages to teammates in the last hour, confirming she has not been the one playing. She is a 17-year-old girl, but is not good at Overwatch. No Second Wind players management knew. Blizzard is currently holding a meeting with with uh, Second Wind uh, players and managements. So, the last guy who was called the juice went to prison. But we could reuse the word now. It's been long enough. Uh, that's the juice around that. <laughs> that's all my sign-off now. <sighs> Maybe the real Ellie was the friends we made along the way. God damn. Yes. So this whole thing was a social experiment. And I, you know, it's funny, like I, 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 I sometimes I, I, I get Jen involved in some of the news because I want her to kind of be up to date on like some of the weird shit that's happening in our industry because, because admittedly, like we do a lot of dumb shit and I feel like it's interesting enough to like tell my wife who doesn't follow games news. Right. And she gets, and she, she, she remembers old dirt and everything that we've talked about in the past. And so I'm, I'm, I'm telling her this story. Right. 
And I'm like, oh yeah, you know this uh, this female uh, uh, um, Overwatch player. She got signed and all this stuff, and so she's getting harassed. Everyone's saying she's fake, and so Jen's kind of like, oh god. Like of course she's getting harassed. Of course she's getting harassed. Because we and we know it too. It's like of course she's getting harassed, right? And then I and then I and then I drop it on her. I drop it on Jen. I'm like I'm like. Turns out she was fake, and it was a social experiment. And she was like, "Why do they do that? <laughs> like that hurts us." Like so she said, she said that hurts us. Like that sets us back. And it's true. It's true because now every time, every time there's gonna be a every time there's a female, you know, anything uh, competitive. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be called into question, and of course, of course, yeah, uh, of course the. Uh, well, first let's go, let's go back here. Uh, so yeah, they basically follow up. So the Punisher, the player assumed to have been uh, have played as Ellie, is just another NA ladder player, not a pro Smurf or semi pro. Uh, it is possible more than one person played under her name. Correction: the meeting between Blizzard and, and SWS has occurred. Okay, so here's some screenshots. Uh, blah blah blah. It says there's more. Seriously, another female Overwatch player has come forward who also used to talk to Punisher. Discord messages between the two show Punisher telling her uh, he has a girl, a lot of them actually, who speaks on voice for him while playing. Says players slid into DMs offering money to seduce him. Uh, and then it just basically keeps going. Pun Punisher bragged, blah, blah, blah. There's actually still more. Like it's just, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. <sighs> Is it a social experiment? Is it an excuse for trying to get away with it? Some shit. Yeah, it's a prank, bro. It's basically that, right? The internet will believe a dog or a cat are more capable of playing video games. Trash. It's a terrible event to happen for female Overwatch players. Absolutely, a hundred percent agreed. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it's. It's fucking sad. It's really fucking sad that somebody decided to do something like this, um, in the sake for the sake of you know. Of social experiment. No, just they try to. They try to just be stupid. They're just fucking stupid. So anyway, so second win responds. They say official statement regarding uh, Ellie's departure, and they basically go through it. There's a lot to read here, but essentially what they say is they didn't vet her properly. Uh, they say, I got a quote here, As of today, Blizzard had gotten back to us on the background of Ellie and notified us that they were not who they claimed to be and discovered that Ellie, the Ellie account was used for purposes we do not support. Due to our desperation to fill our roster, we unfortunately overlooked crucial information that should have been paid more attention to. Oh! <sighs> Oh, man. So then Kotaku follows up and says, Overwatch team player team says player question about identity was imposter after all. So written by the same guy. There's no there's no real mention or anything about how, you know, <laughs> how, how they kind of jumped. <laughs> they got you baited. They got they jumped all over the dropping headlines about this whole thing. They just they didn't really actually hardly mention the previous article uh, too much, except for just kind of think right here, the, maybe the beginning here. Uh, and then that's it. And they just kind of the rest of it just kind of straight news. Yeah. Um, this does mean though, when a pro female comes through the, this, uh, through this, there will be an absolute unstoppable machine of a player. I fucking hope so. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's, 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 de it's depressing, you know, like that, <laughs> uh, that now every time this happens, it's going to be like, remember Ellie, remember Ellie, or is this Ellie, <laughs> right? It's going to fucking happen. Uh, and it's because, and it's because it did happen. It came out, it was true. It was a dude the whole time. The suspicions of the internet were true and they will never fucking forget. Um, but yeah, it just basically sets things back and it's just, it was fucking crazy drama at the end of last year, beginning of this one. What the fuck? That's how we start the year. The internet never forgets. Exactly. Michael Kotaku thought ju thought uh, jumping on gamers for driving Ellie away, but then it all came out they blamed gamers for being for them being duped. Oh, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is the side of Kotaku that I'm not very appreciative of. Uh, they just don't not own up to anything, unfortunately. But Jason Schreier is there. I'm like a huge fan of his now. <laughs> like after like going through and doing all this research and everything and coming back, where like all my information was coming from like or not all my information, but like a lot of stuff that uh, that seemed level headed was actually coming from him. I was like, oh shit. Ah, oh, man, we got more drama though. Not that this is like a drama show or anything like that, but but this is this is tough. I got actually, I actually, this one's so fucking weird. I should set this up. Um, how do I set this up? Let me say do 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 do. Okay, cool. I think we got it. All right, drama alert. No, no, real drama. There we go. Real drama. Throw it way back. Fuck yeah. Ah, they picked a new unknown player over the established ones. Uh, because a girl. Oh yeah, there was there was that talk too. I guess, I guess like the um I don't know this for sure, but I guess the team manager of Second Win made a sexist comment um uh, about um about women in competitive um 
like the on the 15th and then like i guess the, i don't know if the tweet still exists probably deleted um but then the next day they signed ellie and so it almost made it, it made it feel even more suspicious it was like well this guy was just talking shit about women just yesterday and then all of a sudden he signs a woman to the league that's really fucking strange makes it feel like they, they, they were in on the whole thing but there was so much so much so many things that just kept on you know, like conspiracy theorists will be like oh but then there's that and all these things keep adding up and maybe it equals that. And so then, oh, hey, look at that came out. It was true. And the whole then everyone's kind of like, oh, I fucking told you so. See, see, ha, ha. Anyways, so uh, can you guys guess what the la the next the next thing is? I doubt it. I don't think so. Not this one. Um, this one was uh, this happened. Started on January 2nd, actually. <laughs> and that just took days to unravel. Holy crap. Yeah, Boots got it. But it does, it's not Jesse Cox, though. Not, not, we're not starting there. We got to roll back a little bit. We'll have Jesse Cox in the background, all right? Because that's, that's how complicated this is. I have to actually go uh, back onto these old tweets or to pull them up. Actually, I might be able to do this. Let me see if I can do this. Let me see. Boop. There we go. Same tweet, different background. Ta-da. Getting good at this technology thing. So this is Pirate Software. They make a game called uh, Heartbound. And they call out... Matt, Pat, from uh, Game Theory. Leave Row alone. Oh man, I saw this. I saw this stuff unraveling, and I was like, I was, I was, I was like, wow, that's that's crazy. And then when I saw where it went, I was like, whoa, this is like swung right into my backyard. What the fuck is happening? So Matt, Pat, I don't know his actual name. Is he going by Matt Pat? Is is you Maticus Paticus? Sure. So the guy from <laughs> the guy from Game Theory, Matt, uh, he gets called out by this game developer and says that, hey, you're not linking to our stuff. That's kind of fucked up, right? You never linked to our game and you got our studio name wrong as well. And so he basically shows a link here and it says, you know, and he shows this is basically there's nothing. Undertale's mentioned. Undertale's hashtag, actually. Undertale 2's hashtag. Toby Fox's hashtag. Wow, it's crazy. Full game. All this stuff. All this stuff is, is uh uh, is being linked and so Matt Matt responds and he says I'm sorry to hear you're disappointed for our recent playthrough of Heartbound But what you see as disrespectful. I would argue as opposite. Let me explain First, I don't review the thumbnail tag description etc prior to live streams going up anymore That's handled by two members of our team. However, I trained them so the decisions are on me So it's not my fault, but I'll take blame for it, which is fine. That's fine That said their goal is to make the live streams as searchable as possible and for games with limited searchability That's as, that's important as it gets them the audience and attention they deserve it's the rationale behind our Deltarune videos being branded as Undertale 2. Your game is great, all this stuff. Regarding links, we don't tend to link back to games we're playing. That's not an intentional slight to you. It's just rarely something we do for games that aren't fan-made or free. Why the fuck would you not link to a game that you're covering? I am certain that you guys will not be able to find a single video that I put out, probably ever, it's gonna bite me in the ass. Where I don't have a link to the fucking game. At least I hope you can't find one. I know every indie for breakfast has it. Because if you go to fuck, you found one already. God damn it! All right, fine. I'm a shitbag. But I know my indie for breakfast episodes have it because if you type in mikeb.it/i4b and then uh, the name, I think it's all lowercase, the name of the game, uh, it'll pull up that game because I use the same bitly uh url for every single one uh our format for every single one makes it easy for me to find and remember so anyways yes while you guys are looking through my history trying to find <laughs> call me out on this shit fine it's fine it's fine whatever uh at least i'm not i'm not here saying hey i never linked to games why would i link to games that i cover that's crazy so toby fox toby fox you guys you guys know who that is he made undertale all right he's basically a god to some people because he created the most memorific game of all time to some of these younger folks, right? For for me, it was like, oh yeah, he made another game. Okay, it was a cool game, right? But man, to like 20-year-olds, this game was like massively influential somehow. Like that shit is everywhere. It's crazy. So he says, you should link to any game you play. Creators need all the help they can get and think carefully if you're misleading your audience with how you present your videos. You went too far this time. The cult of Undertale is horrific. It's 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 insane. Like if you're not part of it, it's like it's a it, on the Venn diagram. It's like a whole other circle that has the tiniest little bit of overlap. That's like the gateway to get into that weird fucking space uh, of like just twenty year olds. Some of you guys might be into that. Um, so, anyways, Toby Fox calls him out. That's pretty forty thousand fucking likes. All right, so that's pretty fucking huge. 
And so Matt gets shit on by the internet. He gets shit on by the internet. And he comes clean. He says, I'm sorry for what came across the defenses again, defensive. Again, I meant no disrespect, but apologies are one thing. Actions are another. All games will now be linked to download. We'll revise them, uh, revise the way we tag and title live streams. I promise to improve. Hopefully this is a good start. Yay. So he admitted that he was incorrect and, uh, and not linking. And then, you know, we ended up moving on. Husky, StarCraft Husky says, this is what you're pretty disappointed about? Free promo and sharing your game to hundreds of thousands of people? Curious what your increase in sales has been over the last two days. Didn't link to your, to your game? Are you implying your community isn't smart enough to use Google? Also, in a previous video about your game that Matt, P Matt has made, you posted in the comments that you're happy that he played the game. I've attached an image as a refresher. He didn't link to it then and you seem pretty excited, but now is now it's going too far? Maybe, maybe Husky, maybe, Maybe he, he made a comment because there was no mention of where the game fucking came from. And so he decided to say fucking something. So that way his name is at least somehow associated with the game he fucking made. Who is Husky? Oh, you have to Google that one. So Husky is, uh, uh, he, he used to be a StarCraft caster slash our content creator. Um, like in the early, like StarCraft two days. Uh, and, and he ended up like, he ended up like I guess leaving uh, and ditching ditching everybody or something like basically disappear. He basically ended up disappearing. His his girlfriend uh, actually had a, had a pretty successful excuse me had a pretty successful or like still has a pretty successful YouTube career. And um, what I hear is that he basically left to to go and manage that. Um, so that's what that's what Husky said. Still pretty fucking out of touch. Pretty fucking out of touch. Sounds like someone who hasn't made a YouTube video on covering games in a long time, doesn't know what it's like, maybe, forgot what it was like. And then Jesse Cox gets involved. And this is when, this is when it really came back. I saw, I saw the Toby Fox stuff, and then this, and I was like, what the fuck? Okay, so this is, this is like, this is my dude, this is Jesse. He's like, I can't even begin to start on how this is the biggest bullshit take imaginable. How hard is it to give credit? How hard is it to link to, to a game? If you're making a buck on someone else's work and you have a hard time doing this in 2019, you're at best lazy and at worst a sleaze. Yeah, when, yeah, when, when, Jess, when Jesse comes out you about some, some drama, you know you might be on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 might be on the wrong side of this fucking battle man uh and so he quote retweets him this is not a reply it's a quote retweet retweet so husky comes back quote retweets him and says also looking at the newest gaming videos from most everyone in your friends of the butterfly youtube channel list which by the way no one fucking updates uh not a single one of them is linking to where to buy the games they're playing are your friends lazy and sleazy shake my head Right now, I don't know. I don't know the valid the validity of this. I didn't go and check the friends of Butterfly. I might be on that fucking list. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. That shit was managed by um by uh, uh oh god the Game Station like in Polaris back in the day. They just basically told us they were like they sent us an email say hey swap out your stuff for this and that was it. So really, Jesse Cox could have potentially just had a bunch of old shit from the Game Station. He's totally forgot about this. It's possible. Right, I know mine probably is. And then, of course, Jesse responds, because this is just going back and forth, going back. so much fucking dirt, man, so much juice, so much juice, there we go, it works. Don't even come at, don't even come at me on Friends. Uh, I watched you ditch every single one of yours in order to schmooze with YouTube royalty. You ignored people because it wasn't good for your PR. How dare you? You wouldn't know friendship if it bit you in the ass. Woo! Woo! Man! <sighs> so he says this. And it's just like, whoa. And if someone responds, so he didn't just ditch his friends, he ditched the entire StarCraft community. Which is, which is, it's what it sounds like. Uh, what I read was that he deleted all of his, all of his, uh, uh, StarCraft YouTube content, which is a ton of guides and shit. Jesse hates ego, right? Yeah, he'll, he'll definitely chew it out of you. Um, so then, and so this happens and I'm like, woof, man, I thought it was over. And then Dodger responds, says to everyone speculating, I've tried to be as kind as I can over the years, but a lot of people had their feelings hurt. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't one of them. Jesse Cox is just one, the one who finally went for it. And it's honestly very cathartic. So now it's not just Jesse. Oh, Jesse's just, 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 Jesse's just, he's just tweeting some shit. He's, he's just getting involved, you know, just getting involved, right? Now it's like, oh shit. Like when Dodger, when Dodger has your back on something, you are right. <laughs> you, you are correct in whatever that thing is if Dodger has your back. Oh man. So, uh, oh, except, for, except for my name. She fucked up my name that one time. Yeah, that's right. Ah, oh, yeah. So this drama has been held out for like forever. Forever. 
TB would have settled this in a fucking heartbeat. Oh, I know. I know. I know. You know what any of these people are? Oh, these are good. Well, the, this side of it. Cause these are good people. Um, so then Husky responds to Ken. Because we can't just let this die. Um, he says, last time I'm ever tweeting you, this us not being friends has nothing to do with other people, only you. Years ago, I decided to cut toxic people out of my life. You call names, talk shit behind my back, and insult others. I see not much has changed, and it was the right choice. Now, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe Jesse Cox talks shit about people behind their back. Maybe, you know? Oh, who knows? Who knows? But he says, good morning! <laughs> if you're gonna, because it's 9.32 the a.m. the next day. If you're gonna lie to people, Husky, that's on you. But you stopped talking to me after you and Ro stood Crendo up on dinner. So we're getting details now. I'm super intrigued by this because you know these are people that i feel like i know i would call jesse cox a friend um and so like seeing so seeing all this up on ravel i was like well, what the fuck's happening here uh it says that basically that you and rose stood krender up on dinner they tweet how rude it was and you told them not to because it would ruin her image and i defended him i will not let you rewrite history revisionist history absolutely oh is that the same is this the same one i got my tweets all mixed up man i got so many fucking tweets here it's crazy so I thought that was it. I thought that was it. Um, oh, 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 no, 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 no. So Ro, Ro, Rosanna, uh, what is her name? Rosanna Pancino. I was called Ro. Uh, Husky's wife, I'm sorry, uh, girlfriend, uh, comes into the fence with old ass texts from Crendor showing the, her side of the story. Starts it off with, you're lying. This is not true. And so it says, first, Husky was not even the same state. I invited Crandor to dinner and tried to make it work. I felt horrible. I ran late. Let him know immediately after the meeting was an honest mistake. And so she basically has all of these texts, right? This is fucking crazy, man. All these fucking texts from Crandor basically saying all this shit, right? We could come hang out, all this stuff, right? Uh, what, what time, what time is your business meeting end? It's about five, all that stuff, right? Yeah, just text me all this shit, right? And... It turns out that she couldn't make it, and I guess they had driven all the way down there. They couldn't make it, and um, <laughs> he's like, oh, no, Ro. I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so fucking weird, man. It's so fucking weird. And she says, messing up dinner was an accident, but publicly, publicly bashing me was not. This is an example of why we were not compatible friends. So the tweet was, you actually screenshot the tweet somewhere in here. Um... Where she said, there's so many fucking screenshots in here. Uh, I love, oh yeah, that's right. So this was, this was, I guess, Crendor's girlfriend. I'm not familiar with the relationships or anything. But uh, it says, I love being ditched. Truly the highlight of my day. And so there was no context or anything given. But she screenshot and said to the Crendor. And was basically like, you know, hey. Was just, for those wondering, it wasn't Crendor. It was another famous YouTuber whose name I won't mention. Uh, and so she was upset that, that she was basically, you know. She's basically, um, uh, what is it called? What's the term again? Subtweeting her, right? Talking shit about her without dropping her name. Does someone pull the social experiment card here? I wish. I fucking wish. But no. And so she basically goes on and says all this stuff. And then if I pull up, uh, oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh oh. I lost my, I lost my important part. Oh, here we go. Boop. So Crendo responds, says, sorry that we were excited to see our friend from out of town only to go out of our way, only to have them not show up. The irony is now you're trying to do the same thing you're criticizing us for. And so I'll be honest, like I get what's happened here. She didn't, she didn't extend the courtesy of just basically saying, Hey, before you drive all the way out here to meet with us, just so you know, probably not gonna be able to make it. Um, and that's what they're upset about. And apparently there was like a, 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 there's an ongoing thing before this where basically this was like the last straw. Now they're not friends or whatever. But I thought it was interesting was that she, um, she posts all these screenshots. She has all these screenshots from these texts. And people are like, why are you dig up these old ass texts, texts and everything? By the way, she has like a million followers, by the way. So this is like, this is seriously calling somebody out, uh, with some bullshit. Um, let me see if I can find the one here. I see part five. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Yesterday. This is a key thing here. Okay, okay. This is this is game news, general news. <laughs> what games wasn't linked in the description? Oh, never mind. That was uh, yeah. This goes too deep. Yeah, no, right? We're we're all the way over here now. We're all the way over here. And so this is yesterday, which means that she screenshotted these like the day after this whole thing happened. Like she she knew something was wrong with this. She screenshot the day after. This wasn't screen. She didn't like scroll through her shit and was like, oh, let me find this text where you said this thing. She had those things ready to go, like a, like a, like a folder of like just in case somebody says something, I'm gonna pull these out kind of thing. 
But it makes her look bad. It just made her look fucking bad. It made both her and Husky look bad. Nothing. Husky and Roe look terrible in this whole thing. And they, it could have all just been resol resolved, which is like, hey, wow, we're sorry about all this stuff that happened in the past. We just sweep it under the rug. But no, everybody had to fucking get on there, like, this fucking quote retweet and try to make everybody else look bad. And it just turned into a huge mess. But it's okay because Roe posts, Ro posts this. She says, thank you, next. Right? It's kind of like, oh, well, we're good. You know? And then you scroll down. It's like, Wait, you think you came out as the winner? And it's like, taking the high road. It's like, yeah, sorry, but I'm siding with Jesse on this. I think you need some perspective on something that isn't money or YouTube subs. So people, there's a lot of people calling them out on this whole, on this, this whole fiasco. I said, leave Ro alone. I don't know who she is. She makes fucking food videos or something, right? I don't, I don't pay, I don't watch food videos. I'm sure she's very nice. I Google, I Googled Husky and Ro, and I found a video of them eating eating snacks or something together. So I don't know what kind of YouTube stuff this is, but it's not something that I, that I am necessarily, uh, I don't necessarily uh, subscribe to. Uh, nerdy Nummies. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. So good for them. But personally though, like seeing what kind of a person, uh, people they are, I have no interest in anything they ever do. So, <laughs> so yeah. Oh man, just wild. And all this started because Matt from Game Theory didn't link to a game. If he had linked to that one game, if he had linked to that one game, or all the games, hopefully, right? If he had linked to that game and none of this happened, then like none of this dirt would have been thrown out. None of this, none of this dirty laundry would have been pulled out. Jesse Cox would have to get mad. Krender would have to defend himself over tweet or over texts that are like years old. Uh, just wild. An, emo an emotional roller coaster, yeah. That's why I wanted to share this with you guys because, like, even if I know there's a lot of you guys who maybe are not familiar with, you know, with uh, with some of these folks, but still, I subscribe to PewDiePie. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just uh, it's just crazy. Yeah, Mike claims he doesn't watch food vids, but he made food vids. Oh man, that was a long time ago. Did I? Did I, I make? Oh gosh, yes, yes, yes. At the Airbnb, sure. There was that one time. That one time. But. Oh, Sherlock Holmes in the case of the missing hashtag. Something. Notice what would happen if that guy from Bungie never left that thumb drive, which had the text, the text messages and sh talking shit. I know. You see all of this stuff. One of these days, we're going to be this with, with how, think about like how a, as social media age ages, we're going to be able to like, I mean, we just linked across like such a huge gap between where we ended up in this story and where we began with this hashtag thing. Um, like and that and that was like a year it was like a year old i guess where that first video was released or something like as social media ages and more and more people get on and all that stuff like and the archives get bigger and bigger and bigger like we're gonna start digging up dirt that chains together over the course of like months or sorry sorry <laughs> decades uh months <laughs> decades and um it's gonna be all tweets like that whole story was just fucking tweets it's crazy Whole lot of reason. I know, I know. Yeah, if you were if you were like teetering on like whether or not you want to use social media, uh, then this is a good reason uh, not to, I guess, uh, unless you wanna unless you wanna subscribe to uh, AK Mike B on Twitter, AK Mike B, Twitter.com, so AK Mike B, Twitch.tv, so AK Mike B. Follow me on there. That's where that's where you really should, right there. Uh, uh oh, social play statistics for Husky Starcraft. I I could probably take a guess that maybe he's probably losing subs. I don't. He's hardly even doing anything, is he? He's got a he got Instagram though. You're doing shit on there, I guess. I didn't look at it, but you got Instagram.com slash Husky. Got to be doing something on there. Can't remember anything positive coming out of Twitter. Just a lot of people getting fired for saying something stupid, right? Yeah. Here's something I said 10 years ago. Oh, I'm fired at my new job that I wasn't working at but when I was, <laughs> when I was, uh, I made that tweet or whatever. Man. He manages Roe when Roe became big. He dropped everything to help her. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's basically what I read. Um. But still, like, you know, the, the, his behavior, I honestly, like, yeah, I understand, like, again, this is kind of like Josh, like, Josh is pursuing the GTRP thing, that's why we're not doing Internet Famous. This is on a much smaller scale, by the way, right? I will never hold it against Josh that we don't do shows. I'll never be like, uh, oh, yeah, well, you know, we stopped talking because of GTRP, man, fuck you, right? No, he's pursuing something that makes fucking financial sense. There's no way this is, this is going to be an issue. But I'm also a lot like, if he, if he's like, hey, Mike B, want to hang out? Fuck yeah, I'm going to hang out. Whenever I go down to LA, always hit him up. We hang out. 
You know, I don't ditch him as a friend. He doesn't ditch me as a friend. At least I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> so screenshot this video. I know, I know, I know. Someone clip this so we know. But no, I'll, I'll, I'll never, I'll never, if, if, okay, listen, listen, future me. Whatever beef you have with Josh, just fucking iron this shit out. All right? Just, it's probably something stupid. All right? It's this, this, just, yeah. There's nothing wrong with pursuing GTRP as, as a profession. You could be a professional fake cop for as long as you want. As long as you get paid. Totally fine. Totally fine. Ugh. So anyways, I, 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 I know you need to move on. No, thank you next. I'm going to fucking post. I'm going to post this shit on my fucking Twitter. Thank you next. <laughs> Do you know what keeps the bond between you and Laura so strong? Cube world. I know. I know. That's that's the thing that puts it all together. Oh, what the, oh shit. We're not done with the show yet. Where there's got baby mama drama. Yes, Twitch Prime. Yes, Twitch Prime. Sub use Twitch Prime. Twitch.tv slash AK Mike B, by the way. I didn't mention that already. Thank you so much. Follow me on there. It's all the best action is. And, and, and no drama. No drama. You'll hear about drama on this show, apparently. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I think I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. Chat, thank you so much for, for co-piloting. And, and also, like, digging out that last minute tweet, I would never have seen that. The one from uh, Pitchford and all the other shit. That was just the news that was just fucking currently unraveled. Real drama. That's right. Real drama, baby. Ah, so thank you again. Catch me on. Did I already mention twitch.tv slash AK Mike B? Catch me on there. Of course, youtube.com slash AK Mike B. Uh, four breakfast episodes are coming out. I got one queued up. One plus two bonus episodes going to Patreon for the for that side. You guys will get more information on that later. But if you're interested in interested in the live content, you can come follow me here. I'm a POE streamer now. Yay. Just kidding. All right. That makes some people mad. But it's fun. It's a fun game. I don't know. Subscribe to PewDiePie. Thanks for watching. Bye.